Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make an easy pizza pizza recipe using homemade dough and a delicious vegetable sauce. So this super simple dough has only four ingredients. Self-raising flour, natural yogurt, baking powder and salt. So add your dry ingredients to the bowl, so that's the flour. baking powder and salt and mix this together with a fork. Once combined add the yoghurt. You might need to use a spoon to scrape out the rest from the bowl. And again mix this together with a fork until you get a rough dough. Once you have a rough dough you need to pop a little bit of flour on your work surface and now we need to knead. Kneading is where we squidge the dough together over and over again to bring it together. Now it's always a good idea to have a little bit more flour to hand just in case it's super sticky like this dough is at the moment. Just add it not too much at a time because the more you need, the more together the dough will become. So as the dough starts to come together and you've got through that really sticky stage of kneading, just go careful when you're adding the little sprinkles of flour because it now won't take much more. As you can see the dough is in more of a ball as you would expect it rather than a big sticky mass. I'm just going to put one more little bit of flour on to stop it sticking to the table so what we need to do next we need to divide our dough into four pieces ready to roll out cut mine in half one way then in half the other way because we're going to roll these out into rounds let's roll them into balls so pop the dough in your hands and roll it into a ball just like you would do when playing with play-doh. Add in a little bit of flour each time just helps prevent it sticking to your hands. So there we have four balls of dough ready to roll out into nice circles. So to roll your dough out, again make sure your surface is covered in a nice dusting of flour. Um, one thing I should mention, make sure you've popped your baking trays in the oven so they can get nice and hot. So we're pop popping the dough onto hot pans rather than cold. So that will prevent them sticking um, when they're cooking, okay? So to roll this out, you can either use a rolling pin or if you don't have a rolling pin, something that works quite well is wrapping a tin of tomatoes or um, baked beans in some cling film or a sandwich bag or something. Okay. Just move those other doughs out of the way. And what you want to do is get it nice and thin, as round as possible. Now, homemade pizzas do not have to be perfectly round it can be any shape you like. Okay, so my preheated pan. I'm just going to lift the dough onto the pan. Now, you do need to take a little bit of care there because the dough, it'll hold up enough, but it could be a little bit delicate. If you get a little tear in it, it doesn't matter. It's homemade, it's fine. We pop this back in the oven for three to four minutes to give it a little bake before we top it. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see it's gone a bit puffy and a bit crispy on one side. So we're going to use like a, a flat a fish slice or you could probably just use a, a normal knife underneath it. So like a butter knife to scratch away if you don't have one. We're going to flip it over. And now because this side's been cooked nicely too, this is the side we're going to top. So we need to pop some of that lovely sauce on that we made earlier with all those vegetables. Now, if any of you have allergies to any of the vegetables or it's just something you really, really do not like, you can always leave it out. Um, alternatively, if there's some other vegetables that we haven't included in our recipe, you can always add them to your pizza sauce when you make it. It really is up to you and something that you can just make your own. Okay, so a nice covering of that sauce all over my pizza base. Already smells good enough to eat. And then we've got some cheese. So how much you like is up to you. I only had the really fine grater, so my cheese has gone a bit clumpy. And I probably would recommend that you use a grater that makes the cheese, you know, fatter strands rather than these little pieces that's just sticking together as I'm spreading it but it's what I had and it does the job just means I'll have little blobby bits of cheese but that's fine and that's all we've included in the recipe but I really like basil on my pizza so I'm going to add a few little leaves of basil for the proper authentic Italian taste I'm sure the Italians won't think this pizza recipe is that authentic, but it looks quite pretty as well. There we go. So we're going to pop that back in the oven now for another five minutes or so. Just check because the edge will go a little bit dark. All right. So just keep checking it. Um, but five minutes should make it nice and crispy, the cheese bubbly. And once it's there, it's ready to get out. Okay, pizza's cooked, the cheese is bubbly, it's nice and crispy, so I'm just going to slide it off the pan onto the board. And using my knife, I just cut it in half. Now if you're giving this to little ones, I'd let it sit for a good few minutes because that cheese will be seriously hot. We don't want any burnt mouths from eating our delicious pizzas. Okay. There we go. Your homemade pizzas. Um, and enjoy. Experiment with toppings. You could put some meats on there if you like meats. Things like pepperonis or some cooked chicken left over from roast dinners. Um, different vegetables if you like tomato on there or anything that you like at all. 